Dr. Bamji says, I have about eight minutes. Uh, we are about 200 of us here, and that is practically 100, no, 1,600 minutes of nation's time. You know, and uh, you know, I would not like to like to uh, waste this golden opportunity of 1,600 minutes of nation's time. Uh, so let me let me try to uh, respond to some of the important considerations that came up this morning. You know, I'm Telugu, and I'm inspired by what the Agra just said, and I'm very conscious about it. Yendro Mahan Bhavlu, Andariki Namandanamulu. First of all. You know, you are all amazing, you are all amazing. Uh, you know, having said that, uh, let us play a small game, okay? And with the permission of some of our seniors from the NGRI and Dr. Reddy, uh, we, you know, I'll also share one very important insight, maybe at the cost of repetition. But I think that is that is a very important thing which maybe I'll, I'll raise it towards the end. Um, the small game between, between you and me is, um, I'm going to raise nine important points, okay? And at the end of these nine points, I would like you to tell me whether we have discussed something different from what was being, let us say, thrust upon us right from the morning. Well, point number one, uh, let me beg to differ from the kind of rhetoric which has been happening from the morning. And the rhetoric is teachers are not inspiring and parents do not understand the thing which children want. I think we are, we are kidding ourselves. Am I wrong in saying that there are hundreds of teachers around the country who are not visible but they are extremely inspiring? I think it is the most important task here today, the most important task here today, which I think the AP Academy, uh, my brother Garu said that he will not allow me to go back if I don't raise something intelligent, right? So the most important task I think we need to do is, can we create a compendium of successful case initiatives by teachers who are able to inspire students. I think we should stop this rhetoric of saying that teachers are not inspiring. I don't think we should ever do that again. Another important point is when, you know, I do have a child, but I hate personalizing messages here. When, you know, when our children come and talk to us, and when they say they want to do a certain thing, and we feel they will do better in a different area, it doesn't mean that we are not aware of the importance of what the child says. On the other hand, the child should be inspired to understand that what parents are looking for is excellence. The child could do a stream in science, the child could do a stream in law, the child could do any other stream. But after all, don't you think parents are asking for excellence? Right? Whatever be the stream. And that perspective, jo nazar bolte hai na, to look at that excellence is the most important scientific aspect which we want. Now these are two points. I finished two out of nine. The third important point. You know, and I would love my dear young students. Uh, my brother, I also teach at IIMA. Okay, I I have taught FPM courses in IIMA, right? And one of the most important things I've learned over a period of time. And if I think there is one important lesson you need to carry when you walk out of this room, and this is true even for elders. You know what Gandhi ji said about the end of education? He said, a person's true character is how she or he behaves when alone. That is extremely important. What are we talking of inspiration by others? And that takes me to the fourth point. If we say we are true scientists who want to inspire others, there is a very important question we need to ask ourselves. And what is that question? Am I truly inspiring? Do I live the message of science? And what is this message of science? Now challenge me if I'm wrong. Challenge me if I'm wrong. Where is the greatest communicator, the greatest teacher? I repeat for the third time, challenge me if I'm wrong. Don't you think it is one's own conscience from within as a greatest teacher? How often do we listen to our conscience? Do we listen to our conscience 100 times a day? Only that day when we listen to our conscience can we have the courage to say, look, I expect you to change based on what I'm saying. Science is therefore, as you rightly said, Dr. Bamji, and you quoted Dr. Uh, you know, uh, Pushpa Bhargav, yeah. Well, you know, these are only names of people. What is more important is that spirit of science. Science is in fact a way of life. And that way of life in terms of values is to listen to the voice from within and stick to what is true. And that takes me to the fifth important point. Please, please understand that the leaders of science, when you all become elder, which I think is a solution. What India needs today is not people who can be corrupted, who can fudge science. Right? Don't you think if we therefore create those enabling circumstances, 
about which I'll take two to three minutes. I know I've finished four, four, four out of nine minutes, right? Now, what is therefore extremely important, and please carry this fifth important message, the fifth important message. Please, please carry this. The important message is only petty minds discuss people. Ordinary minds discuss events. And it is only the most wonderful minds which discuss ideas. What prevents us from talking about ideas? Even in forums like this, all that we do is to say the rest of the system is not working. And here we are providing a prescription for the problems. Therefore, I think what is extremely important is to therefore live this message. And I think the solution, therefore, is to be able to inspire create the confidence in the students that after all whatever their path whatever the path they pursue and want to take forward should stand for excellence and that excellence is a manifestation of science and that takes me to point number six would you like to know what is the meaning of the word expertise please note it down i teach at iit bombay also where i have an excellent colleague by name dr sham asolekar you know we do my teach in the center for environmental sciences and engineering and that is from from sham i learned this he taught me this great message expertise ante enti it is precision plus speed expertise is precision plus speed we are not here to get onto a ramble you know and keep on hammering points which are no which which are not congruent i think this is a very important manifestation of the ability of students to be able to articulate what is precise and therefore be extremely fast now coming down to three very important action points which was number one which i said can we therefore create a compendium of successful case examples and number two don't you think it is also the responsibility of forums and institutions like us to be able to help students access state of art information state of art information and in the process also build their capacities to be able to comprehend that information i think this is an extremely important capacity building initiative which we all need to get into the last two points whatever be the rhetoric it could be the case of promoting excellence it could be the case of identifying teachers so on and so forth unless we have the right enabling circumstances which are far beyond what we are discussing here enabling circumstances to actually identify the best students the best teachers foster them take them forward involve them in a transparent environment and therefore help science progress if we do not have these enabling circumstances in place we will keep on meeting here every you know every year and keep asking the same question and that brings me to the last point if there is one single most important thing that science can teach you that thing is to be able to ask the right question that is to be able to ask the right question and uh, if you thought these nine points which i raised were same as what was being said so far you can cancel my return ticket right now you know having said that uh, <laughs> let me uh, take the liberty of of personalizing a small thing you know i come with two doctoral degrees in the field of ecology and you know when i went for a post doctoral research and i'm taking this chance to salute a wonderful teacher who transformed the lives of many people and what would this professor do this professor for instance you know one of the hallmarks i'm sure professor you know mohan rao will agree if somebody has said that they have written for the annual review of entomology let's say from the annual review in corporation twice it means the person should be a real world expert right this was professor t n anandakrishnan with whom i worked ma'am do you know this professor used to only take students who have secured second class in their msc and give them projects and transform them into wonderful scientists who would secure their phd's they are all leading entomologists in the country today i am an entomologist incidentally you know and when i when i went to you know i went to the phd first in microbial ecology and when i was looking for a job like any other student i encountered this professor and what did professor say do you know what is entomology i had the courage to say i only know the e of entomology and you know what he said please join me i want you to work with me at the end of two and a half years at the age of 31 i co-authored a book with him published by oxford and ibh don't you want such people who really transform the lives of people we should stop all this rhetoric which is what i'm requesting and now i come to the last point there is something extremely important in events like this and what is an important thing i'll share this story with again the permission of my of my brothers from ngri and dr reddy and others there was a fascinating story which i you know which i read 20 years ago in the readers digest and i'll stop at this okay and i've got i'll take just a minute on this it seems a japanese once uh, you know american once of you know one a very very huge award very huge award a global award this is a story in the readers digest and the americans you know the japanese went to the americans said sir can you please come to japan and speak about our work 
great. Then uh, the American said, Bhai, aap ko Angrezi nahi aata hai na? So if I speak in Angrezi, you have to then translate it into English. My work is so big, I'll take three hours to speak. They said, so no problem, sir. You speak three hours, we will break it into three sessions and we'll translate it so that you are not tired and we are also not tired. <laughs> so great. The American spoke for the first one hour and the translation, the Japanese translation was only for five seconds. <laughs> it was flabbergasted. Then he was invited to make the second presentation. At the end of second presentation, the translation again was for five seconds. And at the end of the third translation, again, it was only for five seconds. So it all ended in three hours and 15 seconds. The first translation said, our American friend has not spoken anything new. <laughs> and the second translation said, I do not expect him to say anything new in the third presentation. <laughs> and the third translation said, my dear brothers and sisters, I was absolutely correct. There is nothing new in what he said. <laughs> the point is therefore, the point is therefore, when we talk of scientific temper, what is required in our country today is the ability to not parrot, the ability to be able to understand, to be able to comprehend, and that will be possible only if leaders live the spirit of science and not throw the burden on the youngsters. Thank you.